And what ceremony is it? Oh. I didn't have the recording on. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Maya. We'll start over. <clears throat> uh, what I wanted to do was kind of lay a foundation as to why we do ceremony and uh, maybe a little bit about how it works. <clears throat> and I think that's catching. <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, I would like to kind of prepare the energies just a little bit so that everyone will be receptive. And so I'm going to ask for everybody that is listening to please pull in the white light. That is creator's light. That's his power, his purity. <clears throat> and pull in this white light, bring it around you, then crystallize the outside edges. This creates a place of safety, but one of communication because the crystals facilitate communication so that we can understand and we can hear spirit. I'm also going to ask that you will invite your guides, guardian angels, ascended masters, ancestral helpers, all those that you are familiar with working with, and only those of the highest vibration are allowed within our crystal sphere. Now I'm going to ask you to recite after me. Father, Mother One, in Father, your Mother, image and likeness, in your I image am. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Go ahead. In your image and likeness. Let's start over. Mother, Father, God. Mother, Mother Father, Father, God. In your image and likeness. In your image and likeness. I am that I am. I am that I am. We are one. We are one. I hereby set the intent to serve my highest good. I hereby set the intent to serve my highest good. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. I declare this space sacred. I declare this space sacred. And the environment around this space pure. And the environment around this space pure. Thank you for this opportunity to be in service for the highest good. Thank you for this opportunity to be in service for the highest good. I open my mind, my I heart. I open my mind, my heart. And I embrace my soul. And I embrace my soul. And so it is. And so it is. All right, what I wanted to do was kind of get us all on the same page of ceremony. And in order to do that, we got to go clear back before the beginning of time when there was nothing and then there was God. And God looked around and said, you know, it's kind of lonely here. I'd like to have something, some people, some children to share this space with. And so he created us out of his own energy. And then he looked around and decided that we needed universes. And then he filled the universe with galaxies. And then the galaxies with solar systems. And when he came to our solar system, I guess he did something a little unusual because he used his own energy to create our planet Earth. And he breathed into our Earth a soul the spirit, making our earth a sentient being that feels and thinks and can act on her own. However, her direct instructions was to serve mankind, provide for mankind, provide food, air, everything that we needed. And she did this willingly and lovingly. The uh, Iroquois people, known as Haudenosaunee, also have a story 
that kind of goes along with this. And I think it's very important because it brings this in and makes it more personal and gives you more of a stake in what's happening to our Mother Earth. And that story starts with a light ship or a planet that was traveling around and came to our Earth and said, Earth, what is your dream? And the planet says, I want to have love. I want to have people. I want to have peace. I want to have harmony. And so this plan was laid out. And this is where our sky woman comes from. She comes from this planet and she fell through a hole in the sky and found herself landing on our little earth. Now, three days after she was on our earth, she gave birth to a little girl. And this little girl, she named Bat Face Link's Long Tail. And this little girl grew fast. Being from Sky World, she grew very fast. And before long, she could talk and run and was helping Sky Woman build the earth. Until finally, she was at an age where Sky Woman realized that she would be wanting a mate. And Sky Woman looked around and she says, oh my goodness, there's nobody here for her. Well, in, to shorten the story, North Wind sees this beautiful lynx and falls in love with her. And nine months later, lynx gives birth to four Two sets of twins, two girls and two boys. Now, in this, Lynx died. The birth was too traumatic. She couldn't survive it, and she died. But she didn't want to leave her children. She wanted to stay and take care of them. And so she became the spirit of our earth. In this way, she is literally our mother, the mother of all humankind, of all mankind. And she inhabits the earth to take care of us and watch over us. Now, one of the things I kind of forgot to mention is that God is love. So all these creations that he made is made out of love energy. And then as mankind grew, our creator God gave one more gift to us. It's called the gift of free agency. And what has happened over time is mankind has taken this free agency and done things that God never intended for us to do. Right now, we can look at the world that we're in and we can see all the things that are happening around that is not love. It just isn't love. And every action that we take that is not love destroys some of the love energy the creator created everything in. And when we come to our earth, some of the things that mankind has done is absolutely incredible in thwarting her ability to take care of herself. It's been decades now since she could clean her own water. We have chemtrails that are poisoning her. So much of our farming poisons her. But what I wanted to talk about was war. Most people don't realize how damaging war is. War at a time was, oh, shooting back and forth, maybe sticking each other with a sword. But mankind has progressed to the point where our weapons can now wipe out hundreds, thousands of people at a time. It was never intended to be like this. 
And so every time one of these bombs, one of these weapons is used, it not only destroys the infrastructure and destroys the physicalness of the people in that area, killing them. But I want you to contemplate for one minute the multi-dimensions of our earth. She's not just three-dimensional. She's fourth, she's fifth, she's sixth. And when we are done with this shift, she's going to be six. She's going to be high again. And so our Mother Earth has a spiritual structure. She has an etheric structure. She has a nervous system that is in the crystal grid. She has all the things that mankind has so that her physicalness and her spirituality can function too. So when we let off these bombs, these bombs reverberate clear through her, shattering all kinds of energy waves, shattering her nervous system, shattering the crystal grid that provides that nervous system. It also, we were discussing this, I think, the other day, that when people are traumatically killed, where they are instantly killed, like with a bomb, that their spirits are in shock and the spirits continue to walk over the earth, repeating day after day after day what had happened to them. And so we've got countless, numerous spirits that haven't been able to go to the light because they don't understand where they are. That continues. But what it leaves here on our earth are the people behind that are sad. So it, there's all this emotion of mourning that flows over the earth. There is all this sometimes hatred because when we harm other people in their nations, they hate us sometimes. So the hate gets magnified. The mourning is magnified. So in actuality, bombing or war is the worst of all pollution because it hits us physically. It fits, it fix, hits us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. It hits the earth on all levels. And so I feel that war is the most important pollution that we need to stop. Yes, Mayanna. Yeah, I just wanted Andras to come in here with his war war experience. And that's war, fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean my mother um was ready to give birth on April thirtieth, nineteen forty five. Forty four. I mean forty four, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Um and uh, she was uh, in a Jewish hospital in Budapest um, because um, the other hospital were, were busy taking care of the wounded from the war that's been going on for a number of years. And um, on the top of this Jewish hospital, there was a glass dome um, over the operating room also the birthing room and she was tied in in the harness and um, uh, she saw planes going over and they were starting to drop these bombs so of course you know her mental state immediately got pushed beyond the limit and emotions and she became hysterical and I, I she couldn't even reach me everybody scattered with the bombs going off crazy so I was born to that devastation that you, that you were just describing 
I was born to bombs. Um, of course, I don't remember it, even though she told me stories. Um, uh, there's no way for me to remember it, but cellularly, it has affected me right off the bat, even as as um even before I was really born, because um, it started just before I was born. I was born to the that crazy um, devastation that you were just describing. So it's interesting that you said, let me share that because uh, I thought of that immediately, you know, when you mentioned bombs. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's um, It's been that way ever since. That crazy, this was the second, our last world war, right? The second world war. And it, it, I was born so exactly April 30th is a year before um, the end of the war, uh, world peace uh, was May 1st, considered May 1st, 45, a year and a day after I was born. So during that entire year, that intense, crazy, uh, mixed up world was around me. This is even before I could, of course, talk. And uh, but my my mother was like this uh, intensely. I don't even know how to describe that, but <laughs> I was aware of the fact that my my mother was beyond anything that I was all she my was life. Really shouted. Yeah, but and uh, I suppose. I suppose if I had that kind of, of consciousness in my mind as to what was going on, uh, I suppose I would have been shattered too. But I, I, I wasn't shattered. It, it, uh, it gave me um, a kind of a, a, um, a feeling that I had early on about having no fear. And uh, so I, in, in a way, I really go back in, in gratitude because gratitude is the only thing that we have that puts us beyond any kind of a, even under circumstances, <laughs> is that, um, uh, so I have gratitude for just being here. And even under those circumstances, because it allowed me to go on with no fear. And and fear is what connects us in the fourth dimension often. Fear is the emotion that is easiest to manipulate in the fourth dimension. So him not having fear, you know, goes along with the pan story, the Papa Pan, you know, <laughs> Pan's shadow. Pan didn't have a shadow. Yeah. And so <clears throat> that's the that's how I relate that experience multidimensionally is that the fear is the shadow and we each have to clear our shadow to be the multidimensional beings that we really are. That shadow has to get and cleared. And of course the other saying is that there is only fear and love, you know. That's right. And but I, it's not no fear and love. It's it's really the, kind of the other the other side of the of the coin. The fear is love, and so I I was blessed with having no fear and just clear love, and I, that's kind of how I live <laughs> all my life. You know, it's yeah. like with yeah. without at first, of course, without the definition of of what love is or what what's what's that all about Alfie <laughs> I, I, anyway so I'm just I'm just allowing myself to show my hand side you know that that's that's really how it began <laughs> um. okay <laughs> Uh, yes, I think anyone who has actually experienced war 
all our beautiful young men we sent to Vietnam and the destruction that that did to their psyche, to their emotion, to their body, to their body probably was the least of the destruction that that caused. And so if you've seen any type of war, then you know, you know better than the rest of us what war means. And this transaction goes on on our earth. And so this is the situation that our earth is in. So when we do ceremony, we're doing ceremony for all of that, for the physical, for the mental, for the spiritual, and for the emotional. Declare all of that from her. Uh, it is good for each one of us to do our own ceremony. But when we can form a group, let's take just 10 people, okay? If you had a group of 10 people that could get together and meditate and pray and do ceremony, just their coming together immediately gives them the energy and the power of 100 people. If you dance, if you sing, if you laugh, you now boost that hundred people up to the energy of a thousand people. This is the kind of energy that we can generate in ceremony that you can't generate sitting at home in your bedroom or your living room. Um, the other thing about this type of ceremony is it creates community. You pull together other people who think like you do, who believe like you do, who have their heart in the same place as you do. And when you bring that kind of oneness and unity together, the energy and the power of that just explodes that much more. I kind of thought maybe I might share with you a couple of the experiences that I had while doing ceremony because um, they're rather unbelievable. They don't really fit into the scope of our everyday world, you know? Uh, I've been doing ceremony since 2006. And uh, at that time, we were doing a very special medicine wheel for Crystal Mountain under the direction of Blue Thunder, who uh, is known as Benny LeBeau. And later, his name was changed to Rainbow Thunder Heart, or Bavado. And he has since passed in 2016. But uh, we were working on this mountain. It was a four-year commitment. And so we would uh, covered a medicine circle of 300 miles across. And no, it was 150 across. Anyway, it took us into four different states, and we were going around doing these ceremonies. And we had a gentleman come. His name was Alex Stone. And Alex had had kind of a rough life. He had drank a bunch of alcohol, been an alcoholic, and he essentially was dying from liver failure. And uh, he told me this when he first started to come out. Now, Alex was really kind of cool because he was a Jesus person. And every few sentences, it was, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. And this is great. You know, I really loved his commitment. I loved his energy. I loved his faith. But he says, I want to be an earth healer. And so I took him up on a mountain with me. And... Uh, up there, he kind of got the idea that this was for the earth. Jeez, we were glad to have Jesus there because we love to have his help. We love to have his power and his energy. But the ceremony was for the earth. And while he was up there, he had some little people follow him home. This is one of the things that is so fun about ceremony is that it crosses the dimensions. And so you end up with fourth dimensionals like little people and Bigfoot and dragons and all kinds of things that you don't see in our 3D world. 
and they will come and join you in ceremony and they will send their healers. They have healers too. So their healers are the ones that come to add to your energy and to help you with it, with the ceremony that you're doing. What I wanted to tell you about Alex, though, is that it was really hard on him to come to our ceremonies. Very hard. It was hard on him physically because his health just wasn't there to do it. But he came anyway. And he came faithfully. And on the very last ceremony that we did that completed our medicine wheel, uh, Lord Metatron sent in a gold thread, a gold light. And you watch this gold light weave back and forth through the air and through everything. And in this, I saw this gold light pick Alex up. Physically, he was down here doing ceremony with us. But spiritually, his spirit body was picked up. And the gold light crisscrossed and wove through him. And then set him back down. About two weeks after this ceremony, Alex called me. The ceremony and his faith had healed him. He no longer had any liver damage whatsoever. That is about the most amazing story I can tell. But we did have other ones. Another one that we had, we were out in uh, the desert out in Vail, Oregon. And uh, uh, my partner at that time did the Four Directions song. And as she's singing this song, the sky just literally opened up a portal. And we had thousands and thousands and thousands of dragons come and join us. Now, I didn't know there was such thing as dragons. So this was a big surprise to me. But these dragons, they come in and they sat down around us and we discovered that even where we were doing ceremony was on the top of an earth dragon because every once in a while it would shift during the ceremony. This ceremony brought us several gifts. One of uh, our earth healers uh, had an angel come down and stand beside him, Chris Yamada. And as this angel stood beside Chris, it showed Chris the ley lines. And after that point, we didn't have to measure or look for him because Chris could see him and tell us where they were and where we could do our ceremonies. Another gift that we got is at the time we were working with uh, a uh, Paiute man uh, from Nevada. And he couldn't come to this one. But he sat in meditation, evidently in his special place, and we saw him come through the air on one of these ley lines uh, to join us there. Now, we got done with this ceremony, and I'm starting to close it down. And uh, one of the gals says, uh, did you forget something? I'm getting hit on the top of my head. And I said, oh, the dragons. I forgot the dragons. This is where I learned what fantastic healers dragons are. They use that fire breath to go into the earth and clear out blockages in the streams and in the rivers and the underground rivers. Clears them out so that the water can return. They also go in and they move magma around so that wherever there is uh, buildups that could possibly cause potential problems down the road, uh, they clear all of that out and even it out. And they are they're just incredible healers. They love this earth and they, they love working with her. Yeah, I, I want to share... Um... The Yellowstone experience that I had. Please. I was there in Boise. 
so it would we were having like 80 earthquakes a day out of Yellowstone and it was really volatile and in Boise we were a little concerned because if Yellowstone went off you know we were pretty close to it and you know somebody said to me well I figure my guides will give me a heads up and I can get out of the way and I thought well I really want to know what what the purpose is in this I want to know why Yellowstone is so active and if there's anything that can be done and I had learned about going and speaking with elements so I just went in meditation and I went to the caldera and I asked the caldera what is your purpose as it relates to humans on the surface of the planet and life to life on the surface of the planet and the caldera responded the dragon needs to breathe. And I was like, the dragon needs to breathe. Okay, well, take me to the dragon and let me talk to the dragon. And it was this kind of a yellow green dragon and it was in a cave and it just, it had grown so much that there was no room and it was gonna break out of the earth so it could breathe air. And I, I it was just a young dragon. And I, so I was just talking to it and I was just trying to understand how, how this process was working. And I just thought, well, is it, is there another way? And I heard a little voice say, oh, the fire knows a way. So I said, well, take me to the fire. So I went to the fire and I asked the fire, how can the dragon breathe air without destroying the whole planet? you know, and life on the surface. <laughs> and the fire said there is a process. It's a long process and it'll take two years. But if the dragon goes through the fire, part of it can breathe the air immediately. And over the two year time frame, the rest of it will come out into the air and it will fly free. Mm. And I took the message back to the dragon and I explained the situation and the state of, you know, the surface of the planet and what breaking free in that manner would do to humanity and life. And the dragon said, part of me will breathe immediately. And I said, yes. And I knew this was an atomization of the energy that it was going to be atomized going through the fire and burning up like the Phoenix does. And the, the dragon agreed and it dove into the fire. And by doing that, it dove through, it just dove through my heart. The fire was my heart. I was the fire in that moment. And it just dove through and I, I saw this little iridescent dragon in the air and then more iridescent dragons and pretty soon all these little purple and green and yellow dragons are flying around and then after a time frame, the two year time frame, they coalesced together into the form of a great dragon and flew as one and became the one great green dragon. And then I was guided, after that, I was guided to fold time. And this timeline appeared in front of me. And I grabbed the moment the dragon dove through the fire and the moment it was one. And I was told to fold it. And I just brought those two together. And there was a loop in the timeline down here. Where'd you go? And, am I there? Can you see me? Yeah, yes, now. It, 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 there's a time thing going on. Yeah, go on, Mariana. Ah, interesting. So as I folded the timeline, the loop down here just disappeared, and the two years passed. In the point. And, and in that moment, I knew that something different was happening in me, and over that next two years, every quarter of the year I felt all four seasons and so it, it passed so all four seasons happened within six months 
And that's actually when I was moved out of Boise was at mm. the end of that time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I want to, I want to take a moment here and welcome Michelle. Michelle is my collaborator and companion in the Global Grandmothers. <laughs> Good morning, good evening, Deep Bell. What beautiful, beautiful work you've been doing in those other realms. It's just enchanting and so it makes so much sense. Um, if I could just jump in for a minute and just say, I was doing a meditation and that's why I'm a bit late. I got caught up in, in some things that came through after the event for yesterday. I apologize for being late. Um, but my father appeared um, a few weeks back and I share a mutual vision with uh, some of you know, or my Anna, you know, with my brother's best friend who is a family friend in England who lives in Cornwall, Charles. Um, and he told me of this place where my father was more recently and my father pointed out a, a space and they've been guiding me to you all and to this new awakening of the world and to my calling, thankfully. And so here I am now at this point at an estuary and there's a great big cliff face. And um, we were trying to work out what, what that is. And the voice of my father came through to us and said, there's a long walk around the bay, right down the estuary and across to come join us up over the top of the cliff, you see. And, um, or you can climb the cliff face. And I'm thinking, I, I, I can't get physic, yeah, come on. Uh, or actually um, there is, um, and so we were pondering this for, for a while. And then he said, actually, there is another way, relax, I just realized and I just saw she's going to fly up over it. She'll fly, she'll be lifted up to fly over. So uh, welcome when she's here. And so last night I got to the top of that cliff face and as I looked out the whole um, terrain, I could see, just see all this beautiful new frontier, like the water, the lakes, the peace, the beauty. And that is the vision I will be holding moving forward now. Grace with that empowerment of vision to all of the elements, or, you know, the water, the, 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 the air lifting us up. You had the fire, right? So there's an earth. Um, so, and, and I knew, I know when you said, it came into my heart. It was my heart. The fire was my heart. And we've confirmed that that has been the direction that guided me to you, Mayana, and so to, you know, all of this new work ahead. And what more can I say? But I just, it's just wonderful, isn't it? it uh, we're very, very fortunate and privileged to be bestowed with this wisdom and for it to be getting out there now. What? Small. Yeah, yeah, that's what excites me is we've had this information for how long, but we're finally getting formats in order to share it and bring yes. it out so that other people can learn about it, participate in it, help with it, recreate it in their own areas. I mean, this is this is fabulous. This is what we've been waiting for. It is, it is, it is. I, I, I totally agree. Last night, um. There was an event in my local art community center and uh, the manager, who's a dear friend of mine, came out on Friday. I was visiting there and looking at some artwork and playing some music. And um, she, she bailed me out and she said, hey, are you coming tomorrow evening? And I said, you bet I am. So it was the children making lanterns and then walking out along the the to the park, to the pier. We have a little pier here in this little corner. It's kind of secluded, but it's it's still in Melbourne City. So uh, I'm like, yeah, and I'll make a lamp. And I, I made a lamp and, uh, and I got there and uh, I walked with the children 
along the pier. My children are, weren't there. It was me and Karen. And I took some beautiful photos of families, and they're all wanting me. And I took photos of them with their phones. And it was very important for me to, to capture their images for them on their phones and to be of service in that way. And then we went back to the art centre and the gallery had been set up in a circle. And there were eight seats uh, set up in a circle with yoga mats next door because this was going to be our meditation for the evening for the solstice and for the um, full moon. And that was what Karen had asked me to, if I was be joining. So I did join uh, and waited and made a cup of tea and just waited there quietly until everyone had reconvened, the children all gone home. And uh, when the, um, the moderator came in the room, I was blown away with her light and her energy. And when she, and there were, as I said, about eight, eight seats, but when she started the, the process and introduction to the astrological chart that she handed out to us all with the moon where it's at and all the stars and constellations, this celestial alignment, as you all know, the astrological chart for the full moon. Um, we, um, we were 13. There was 13 of us. And I, I said, this is a very powerful circle. We have 13 full moons in the year. And then she was teaching to these women who'd never had experience about manifesting, about creating change and growth. And they all took it. And it was just wonderful to see that literally before our eyes experience in that circle so quickly, so easily. It was such a privilege to be part of that. And um, winding up after the meditation, and Mayana, she got us to do the orb thing, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and to keep safety because though, though we were friendly and welcome in that sphere, to please protect our energy regardless and do the orb thing before we started our meditation. And uh, uh, in, in the end, um, I was revived completely energetically on a cellular level and spiritually and reassured that the younger ones were coming through. It was such a gift to me to see all these children, one with the lanterns and a poetry. At, when we were on the pier, there was a poem dedicated to the opening of the portal of the new moon in the, in the winter solstice. And we also were on the cusp of cancer and in, in Australia, the crab, we, she was saying she felt very appropriate in the Southern Hemisphere because we're coming out of our shell. Uh, uh, and, but we have the shell to protect us in the cold of winter. It gets cold here. And so all of these things sort of processed. And, and at, once the meditation had finished, um, Karen and I, of course, we, we were drawn to, to have a little conversation at, if, as the circle had been broken. Everyone was milling around. She said, she said, wow, she said, you, you looked 30 years younger. I said, yeah, I, I, I recharged my cellular. She said, I could, I witnessed, I saw that. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's live and well, this beautiful energy we're bestowed with. I mean, look at our energy and what we're able to do. And the, the just the privilege of, of seeing and knowing and being able to inspire not only our own selves and our lives, because it's way more than that. And that was evident to me yesterday. And and then two women came up to me and said, are you? And I said, yeah, I'm a visionary and a seer and I'm psychic and I'm a healer. And they're like, oh, you know, and they were like, okay. And I said, but hey, you know, I'm part of a, a, a network, global grandmother network. We want that. We want to join. We, what do we do? And I'm like, here, take my number, please. And let's, let's create a circle on the ground here in Altona. So that all transpired on top of everything else yesterday. And just, it's igniting, isn't it? It's igniting all the way now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Michelle mentioned manifestation. This is another thing that we get to learn when we're doing ceremonies. Yeah. Because you're doing your ceremony and you say, let the light in. 
and it could be cloudy, cloud cover, clear across the sky, and bingo, here comes a beam of light right down on top of you. Or you can say, wash the earth clean, and it can be bright sunlight, and somehow raindrops fall on you right there in the ceremony. It is instantly, and you begin to understand the power of your own words, the power of your own energy, and you can make things happen. Yeah, exactly. It's exciting. Exactly. It, it certainly is. And as just as Mayana was explaining when she was grabbing the time of, of the dragon going into the fire and and the, the, the conclusion of that two years when she folded it, literally, you, you, you'll see when on the playback, Mayana, it froze, the time froze. You were there in the infinite telling when you told that story. We, we both saw that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a funny story as we were up on the mountain and I'd taken the eagle wing and I was directing there and I was going, whoosh, whoosh. well, that's also directs the wind. And the wind came up almost instantly and just threatened to blow us off the mountain. And Chris Yamada came over and he says, we're seeing it's the eagle wing. Put it down, put it down. <laughs> So you learn a little bit the whole time you're out doing all these things, too. But uh, being in the middle of ceremony, time gets suspended. Uh, dimensions combine. And it is just absolutely incredible. It's the only thing I know of that does that. Because I certainly never experienced anything like that in church. I never experienced mm -hmm. any of that anywhere where you get all these dimensions coming together and they're coming for one purpose and that purpose is to heal the earth because what happens on our dimension affects the other dimensions as well. Maybe yeah. not as much as it does ours, but it does affect them. And if we were to actually have another war we would be destroying all of those dimensions. And we, we're not going to be allowed to do that. We just flat are not going to be allowed to do that. I don't know what it's going to take or how that will happen, but I do know that we're not going to be allowed to do that. Um, anything else? I did have two more stories. I don't know if you want to hear them. Well, sure we want What's to hear What's your time them? like? Oh, we, we've been on here a little less than an hour. Um, I just want to, what you were just saying, I'm trying to capture it back. When, when humans kill humans, it's a reverberation through dimensions because we're so connected to the other beings in the other dimensions, ourself in another dimension, in an alternate reality or whatever, that was the part of the earth experiment that nobody anticipated, that didn't we didn't know would happen that a human would kill another human. Because animals don't usually kill of their own species. Well, sometimes the males, but not usually. And um, this was, the, I believe, I believe I, in my coming to know what's happening in the planet, that is a mind virus yeah. that in, infected humanity and the idea of a human killing a human, that's what was spread by the Cain, by Cain, when he went out into the world and married his wife, you know, in that Bible story, he took that virus with him and infected yeah. other people. He was the only one in that. And so the Adam and Eve story to me was a genetic experiment in a garden and it was a genetic experiment gone wrong. <laughs> and that virus got cast out into humanity who were already artisans and creators. And, you know, they, they were the, yeah. the wise people of the earth and that virus went out and infected. And now that's what we're dealing with today is. Yep. 
it's yeah. our turn to turn this around into the proper uh, results, the proper experiment that it was meant to be, to bring forth this love. The love is already encoded into everything. All we have to yeah. do is uncover all the foreign ideas and thoughts that have been brought in that are negative and not part of our original structure. They say that the peacemaker back there in the east where he walked along the uh, Onondaga Lake and the Great Lakes back there in New York, that uh, when he was here, that he encoded peace in the land. That's all North America was ever supposed to be was peace. But we're going to have to uncover the foreign thought forms that have been brought in by so many with lack, strife, war. We have to uncover those, get rid of those, which is another thing that we do in ceremony is clear that off so that the peace DNA can come back and be totally re reactivated throughout the land. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I want one in 2010. 10, 10, 2010, we were in ceremony, a small group of us in Lincoln City, Oregon. And, you know, we were, we were, we had, we, it was the completion. Of, I was doing the double digit days of the month for a while. We're on January 1st, February 2nd, March 3rd, da, da, da. Well, this was no, it was 12, 12, 2010. So it was the last one of the year. And white Buffalo woman came through and I had not had connection with her before, but she came through and she said, honor the traditions of the natives, but don't get stuck in the traditions of the natives. Go beyond the traditions of the natives into your own nativity. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. What does that mean? <laughs> what is nativity for me? What is my nativity? You know, and here we are. It's almost Christmas times. So I'm spending months following that, trying to understand what is my nativity. And I go to a friend's house a couple months later, two or three months and on their coffee table is a book, and it was Ken Carey's Return of the Bird Tribe. Ah. And I was like, oh, I love that book, you know, and I haven't read it in a long time, but I pick it up, and what is that book talking about? White Buffalo Woman, <laughs> Hiawatha. <laughs> and and then I, I just opened it up, and I, in the very intro, it said, we are here to remind you that your your nativity is your essence from the stars or something like that. It's your star <laughs> essence is your nativity. And I was like, that's my answer. <laughs> I am yeah. from the stars. And We're all from the stars. Yeah. yeah. We're stardust. Yes. Yeah. If I can just uh, say that um, that was what my mother told us and I didn't realize that she'd um, shared that with my younger si half sister. But when my youngest half sister came to my place about six months ago, and we were talking deeply about all, all things and the things we'd learned from our mother, and um, you know, the, the, the incredible healer that she was, we. Um, and more about that some other time. She said, you know, she told us we came from the stars. She told me she came, we came from the stars. And I said, darling, that so works. You know, that's so aligned with, with the visions I've been having and, you know, my homage to the story of the Seven Sisters and, um, and also factually on the... We, this is where I love the conduit now manifesting in the physical because I said to her well we, we traced our um, Tongan family our Tongan history 
and the legends of those seafarers that came across from the, the Americas through the islands to propagate and, and, and uh, enjoy and uh, develop and, and become the Pacific Islanders. Not all of them were from that side, but there were many that did come across from the Mayan uh, dynasty way back, way before. Uh, and so this was now um, 300 uh, and before uh, uh, AD. So, and um, the the legend is that um, the, I can't remember the seafarer's name, but I can access it. I've got it all written down. They actually named the Hawaiian Islands and donated Oahu, Maui, and um, and this was this, and then they travelled on from there. But they named them in line with the constellations. They they came down and were given these names from the star people, and then they shared those island names. Hence the power and resonance of those islands and the nebula of the of the Hawaiian islands and the the, the with. And the same, probably all over, but on a personal level, to know that and to 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 be aware that that is literally what my mother was saying in 1954 is beautiful. And um, yeah, you know, so and she was she was challenged for her views. Many Christian people tried to uh, infiltrate our family. And she would vehemently stand her ground and say, no, we're free spirits. We're, even though my father was employed with Radio Voice of the Gospel in Ethiopia, she said, I want to go beyond this. I want you to see Ethiopia, darling, is the cradle of the world of civilization. You know, we, we, we look to, the, to um, King Solomon and, and Sheba and be, before that, those people the, the, and so on. And yeah, it's just, it's so interesting to uh, to share and to hear other stories that connect this knowledge and put the dots together. There's so many new books coming out now where, you know, the manifestation and the reality are converging. And this is our time. This is exactly why and what we're doing, right? And even Andrash with the music, you know, the music, conjures in the physical like this uh, sim somatic cymatic music manifesting you know the sound of the waves and and then you know the the effects and the sounds of the stars and it's uh, it's a beautiful time to be alive such a wondrous time but you know I, I could gawk at it all day long and just be blown away but on a practical level you know to keep for going forward, sharing with with those uh, and dropping those little not knobs of of nubs of of knowledge here and there, like scattering stardust here and there, it ignites and it forms its own little constellations at, in the world. Um, so yeah, we are definitely stars and sharing. Um, yeah the infinite knowledge, which is stardust, which is verbalized, which is written now, which we can play in music uh, and, and go through with all of the elements and manifesting uh, is, is just magnificent, magnificent knowledge that um, we're very, very, very uh, um, uh, um, indebted to the universe for manifesting through us. It's just, just wanted to say. Marcin, do you want to tell us another story before we go? Um, hmm. sure. I did want to comment, Mayanna. You mentioned uh, in White Buffalo story about not letting the native ways, what, however it was you phrased that. Don't get stuck in the traditions yeah. of the natives, yeah. but honor them. But uh, this is the thing that we realize or those of us that work in spirit, we don't really care much for dogma. And so with the ceremonies, there is a basic guideline. But when you're actually doing the ceremony, 
the spirits are guiding it. And so you yeah. never know for sure exactly what you might have say, well, we'll do this and this and this, but you never know what shape or form it's going to take because the spirits come in and do it. We did one of our ceremonies and Don Marie, she uh, was my cohort in all this. Uh, she said, the spirits want a birthing ceremony. And so most of our crew on that particular one was men. And so we had a making a woman ceremony out of our men. And it was truly one of the most beautiful things I've experienced. Here are these macho guys very willingly putting on skirts and scarves and coming into our circle to be women for this birthing ceremony. It was it was just incredibly beautiful. Uh, I'd wanted to mention, we'd been invited to a ceremony that was being done by a Paiute medicine man down in Nevada. This was out of our circle of our mountain. And so it, we were just invited. We went and we went down there. And our Paiute friend that invited us had warned us that this area had been the site of a massacre. And, oh, all right. Okay. You know, it just didn't phase us. It just went whoosh right over our head. We're down there. We're waiting for the medicine man to come and do his ceremony because they were trying to stop a pipeline that was coming in that was going to blow up 65 miles of mountains to lay that pipe. And uh, while we're waiting for him, we decided we'd just sort of check out the spirits in the area. Well, for myself, I went down and I went down into the earth. And there in the earth was three feet of blood. And this blood cried. It was crying, it was screaming. Three feet of blood, a massacre happened here. And then one of our other people, who's a very, very good empath, when he did it, he experienced the life of an old Indian man who was murdered on that day. Then he experienced the life of a woman who had been raped and her baby taken from her and killed. And then he experienced a soldier who thought he was doing something wonderful by exterminating these vermin. I mean, it put him in a heck of a mess for months, having personally experienced this like it was him. But that was when we realized that when people are traumatically dying, they don't go to the light. They stay here and they re-experience it day after day after day. And so prayers, ceremony, uh, we're blessed with the lady, Cynthia, that has done some of this work and she's been able to do it without ceremony, just going herself to release the spirits that are stuck in the land. But this is a very valuable work. And right now, as we have so much going on in the Congo and Sudan and Palestine and what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan and Libya and Syria and on and on and on. Lots of prayers need to be sent for the releasing of these souls. And also you're talking about the shattering. Also these soldiers that are our young men when they get blown up by a by a landmine and they don't die if they then they're still shattered and they need to be brought back together and coalesced back into their being and in a new way and you know it, it yeah. this is this is the it's a new way of healing done yeah yeah because yeah. okay. they've got part of them left on a battlefield over in another country when they come home after that terrible story, I will end with a more positive one, okay? Yay. Okay. We were out on Mount Bora. Everybody's heard of Mount Bora because it's the tallest mountain in Idaho. And many years ago, there'd been a 
rock slide there and the earth had actually dropped seven feet. So we figured, well, that's probably where we need to do our ceremony. So we went there and we set up and did the work to release the stress that was on that fault line. But in releasing that stress, we also released, it's always part of the ceremony, is to call forth for all the spirits that are walking the land, animal, bird, human, any of them that are walking the land that want to go to the light, come now and go to the light. Well, we looked out, we were up on the hillside and we looked down over that valley all the way to the next mountain that was coming up. And that valley filled up. Oh my gosh, it filled up. There were soldiers there that we have no idea what civilization they came from. There was entities, there was gold miners, there was Indians, there was cowboys, there was everything there in that valley and they filled up and they were coming. We set up a vortex of light for them to go into. And as we did that, we had the four archangels come and they stood in the cardinal directions. In between them stood four master ladies. And as these beings would come, they would embrace them, love them, lift their burdens off of them and free them and they'd be gone in a flash of light like that. Absolutely amazing. There were so many of them that we left the vortex open all night so that they could journey through because it was gonna take a long time with all of them that was there. But that was that was one of the most memorable, memorable experiences I think I had watching They've lift the burdens off these people that had walked with them for who knows how long, thousands of years. They would carried them. They would carried whatever it was that kept them stuck here. And they lifted it off and they turned to white light and they were gone. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. <sighs> Thank you, Mayana and Peace Productions. And well, yes. May I just say, can we do ceremony like that when we get the Global Grandmothers Network in the, in the constellations and on the ground globally to heal those areas and bring in the, the experience and wisdom of, of, of someone that has the, that elemental knowledge of guidance to have, um, have that healing go on, go forward to prepare uh, us again for a, a larger healing on the ground, you know, in, in all of the areas of the world that we are able to, to, to place ourselves. And, and I mean, we, we can do it visually, I understand that, but to be in that domain would perhaps be even much more effective. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more fun than doing it through meditation, sitting at that's home, right. that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's part of the intention, I believe, for the Global Grandmothers Council is yeah. that as a network, we have ceremony together at the same time and we give some guidelines for what that looks like, but do it in your own way. But here's some here's some guidelines and ideas yeah. to get. Well, everything. This is the thing: is if you are in touch with spirit, you know how to flow with spirit. You just step into that space, and spirit takes over. You don't have to do anything but be there. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's just glorious. That's just glorious. Yeah, I mean, we have there. some basic steps. We do a clearing. We do a a healing. We do a love and thank you cycle, and then we close. That's yeah. it. I mean, that's the instructions. And yeah. whatever happens within that can take an hour. It can take six hours. It can take two days. It's all up to the spirit. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And perhaps we could do it, do some of that on Zoom as well in the interim and have meetings, prayer meetings to cleanse and purge. As we as we move forward and empower um, the and retrieve space of uh, and create the love in that 
void that was um, desecrated uh, and uh, heal heal it moving forward, be easier process and faster for us to ignite this fire that we need to, to get going um, and uh, acknowledge those beings that have sacrificed themselves, unbeknownst to themselves, that are still in torment, yeah? Release it, release it. From well, the living was, and the dead. Yeah. Yeah, that was part yeah. of the purpose here in the Global Medicine Wheels. Um, yeah. It was to be, it's an acupuncture point. And when we come yes, together right. in groups, they're a node. And, and right. it's to midwife our mother who is birthing a new world and a new reality. And she's in transition and, the, and she needs all of our attention. She mm -hmm. needs our focus, our attention, our nurturing, our loving, and our ability to let the energies flow through us to release those contractions that can bring great devastation to the planet you know there there could be some real rumblings and shakings as she births and we don't know what it's going to look like but when what she's birthing but i i know that it was like wow wow that's so cool <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that is the thing. If people knew that they could come together and do prayers and the ceremony or not, just do the prayers together, they mm -hmm. could relieve a lot of the turmoil and chaos that's in our weather right now. Yeah. Because all she needs is love. Sit there and send her love. And it will dissipate a lot of this that's going on. Make yeah. it less. Perfect. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you guys for joining gals. Thank you for joining us. David's over there somewhere, but I don't know where he is. So but we're just grateful to have had this time together and much love. Much love. Thank you. And all we have to do is to have the intention to choose. That's the the only free will we end the free will to choose to choose love over fear to it's choose true. love yeah. you have the choice to choose love all the yeah. bye for now <laughs> see you next time see you soon, see you soon. Yeah. thank you love you onigitwa onigitwa mm -hmm.